he was like yeah. one of the biggest baby faces around. I mean, I would have to disagree. It's Thursday. You know what time it is. Time for the hottest wrestling podcast on the planet. Beyond the Barricade with your host, Dollar Bill, the cleaner, and the brain. Let's get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in the middle, we have an interesting show tonight. We're going to be talking about, take it away, brain. Some of the greatest faces in wrestling history. None of, none of these three faces you're going to see on that list. Yeah, uh, we definitely have faces made for radio. Yeah, <laughs> especially the cleaner. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. And he comes in and out all the time. <laughs> I uh, I have so many years of bad luck for how many mirrors I break with this wonderful face. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they won't let you in the fun house anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, That's I don't. Why you're not even allowed in Seaside Heights anymore. <laughs> Would you I like Wildwood Seaside? better anyway. Yeah, I've exactly. been to Seaside once, and it was like for a weekend. And the only thing I remember is, um, like, we went to a comedy show, uh, like in one town over. I think it was like Tom's River, and the mm. guy I forget who he is, but his literally opening act was he had like big lips, like you know the um, the glasses with the big lips, and then he had. Well, he also had a raincoat, and he opened it up, and it was a, um, I don't know how to put it, but, um, yeah, yeah, he did that. <laughs> that was his opening bit. He had one so, of those. All right, hey, Cleaner, why don't you get us started here tonight? Okay, okay. All right, but for, before that. Let's define quickly about baby faces here, just to give just to give insight. See, I know I know about baby metal. I don't know about yeah. For the fox god, for the fox god. Um, no, no, no. It's like this. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know what? You know what's ironic? This mm -hmm. is their thing. This is like, it's for like the fox god. But I'm like, bro. Uh -huh. So they're too sweetie. I don't. I wonder if they even know about like Bullet Club and all that stuff. So it's like two of my favorite things do the same hand gesture. <laughs> nice. Oh, so, but um, but yeah, if you ever go out to a concert and uh, Baby Metal's performing near you, I highly recommend it. <coughs> um, but yeah, baby faces. Um, so they're not faces of babies that perform wrestling. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, generally considered... The term baby face is uh, another term to describe the hero in the ring. The one y'all mm. cheer for. Yeah. I wonder how that, that name actually came about. It was a carnate thing, but even then I'm trying to figure out how that came out. Yeah, like why like why would you like oh we need to another name for our good guys? Oh baby face. I'm yeah. I might I mean this might be wrong, so sue me, but because you know how basically like the good people always have this beautiful, you know, nice face and like, oh, it's such a baby mm. face. I don't want to harm it, you know? Exactly. That can make sense. Yeah. And then the heels always look like uh, Dick Dastardly. Or... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one day, let's just get one of those heels. Just like, huh, see, I'm going to beat you in the ring, see? I'm going <laughs> to take your title, see? And yet some yeah. of the heels look like they got hit by a heel. Watch for the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> a really big shoe. Takes out. Wait, oh, uh, I Take forgot out. the first one. It's like, put a smile on, tits out, and watch for the shoe. Oh, chin up, tits out, something like that. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. God. All right. So, who's your first? Who's your first uh, baby face uh, cleaner? Yeah, let's go. Sorry. There's so many to choose for. Uh, choose from. Um, I mean, I, I guess we have to talk about probably the the elephant in the room. Um, yeah, I, I, we're gonna have to bring it up, and then, no matter how much he lies and how much uh, we don't like him, now I wonder what jabroni he is. Yeah, the jabroni, the cheap jabroni, son of a bitch. <laughs> the rest big yellow jabroni. Rest in peace, Shiki. 
Um, but yeah, um, yeah, we got to talk about the the cheap jabroni son of a bitch, Hulk Hogan. Um, no Hulk matter Hogan, if you, we're coming for you. If you like him or you hate him, he oh, we're coming for you. I can't say that the rest. Of the yep, part. exactly. <laughs> But that was the funny. Oh, that was, that was a funny promo. What was that? Um, All of heat. Look it up. <laughs> but yeah, so um, no matter if you love him or hate him, he he was he left a huge impact on the wrestling, whether you believe his stories or not. Yeah, I mean, growing up, it was like on the pot on the media side, it was like. Everything was Hogan. Everything was about Hogan. He was so famous. Even my family knew about Hogan. Yeah. Even some of the people at work knew about Hogan. It's just like he, you know, he just left an impact. You can't deny that, no matter what. Yeah, he he was everywhere. <laughs> Even oh, yeah. when he played a heel, he was still the hero. Mm-hmm. Only yeah. in WCW. No, no, I'm not talking about WCW. I'm not no, even talking about wrestling. I'm not even We're talking about about WWE. Ooh. He played oh, a heel. Thunderlips. And he's exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thunderlips. Said throwing Rocky around like a rag doll. That was funny though. Yeah, and then how about that picture? That's what got him fired. <laughs> That's yeah. what yeah. got him fired from uh WWF the first Vince time. Vince Sr. fired him and then Vince Jr. hired him back. Yep. It's too funny. Yeah. It's like you're you're fired. Kid says you're hired. Yeah. Yeah. And also, all right, Dollar Bill. Hmm. Your first one. I go way back. I mean, probably one of the more more infamous uh, baby faces we could talk about. <clears throat> would definitely be some of the oldest ones that pretty much everybody remembers from record. Even some of the generation still does today is uh, Bruno San Martino. Oh, and, absolutely. Like, Perfect. Goodness, pick. Yeah, you could probably yeah. say he was wrestling's like first real big baby face, first real superstar. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I like my grandfather would tell me stories about seeing him at the uh, second iteration of Madison Square Garden. Oh, wow. I believe because I believe the current one's the third one. So yeah, um, yeah, the second one I think burned down in a fire in like the '60s or something like that. But yeah, my mm-hmm. grandfather would tell me all the stories all about seeing, you know, San Martino, Marciano, um, Buddy Rogers, all those original Capital Wrestling Corporation uh, stars. Yeah. And there was, I mean, like, you can't be a, one of the biggest baby faces wrestling. And like, or you can't be one of the biggest baby faces in wrestling while having an eight year title reign. Eight years. Yeah. Y'all complain about Roman Reigns like having three years. Like, yeah, yeah, try eight years. Imagine eight years and everybody was still like, like people were just as happy in the beginning as they were in the, or just as happy in the end as they were in the beginning. Like he, the crowd almost rioted when he lost after holding the title for eight years. Yeah. Yeah. And we just talked about that. Last show. Yeah. Last show. Last, last week. Yeah, so that just, that shows you how over he was. Even when but he you also got to remember, out. he defended the title a lot more than Roman Reigns has ever defended the title. I mean, wrestling was also very different, very different. That's true. Mm-hmm. Then, that it is today. Still very territorial. Yeah, it was and territorial, now, but it was also um, there was no shows on like specific days. So like there was, was no Monday Night Raw. There was no um eight Nitro. Uh, Wednesday night. Yeah, no mm-hmm. Nitro, no Dynamite, no none of that. Yeah, it was like, yeah. more Wednesday akin month? to what you would see in like let's say New Japan or like at least Japanese or even Mexican wrestling, Ooh, where see. they just show the shows. They just fall yeah. on specific the only day that like the only show that has a specific date is January fourth for New Japan. Yeah. That's it. Every other show is just whenever they, whatever they fall on the week, and they air. Yeah. All right. I gotta say one more thing about San Martino. I remember really seeing some of his wrestling moves in one of the in one of the video games, All Japan Giant Graham two thousand two thousand on the Dreamcast. 
he was actually part of the Legends mode in that one. Yes, yes, I remember that. I remember hearing about that. I, I um, actually have it. I I pro I might have either seen gameplay or uh, I played a uh, emulator version of it. I got like, the emulator I, version of it now, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, but um, but yeah, he was very like even when he was out of WWE, he was still making appearances for like Ring of Honor. He was on one of Ring of Honor show in like 2006. He was on. He was a very frequent guest of um, All Japan. Like he was at Baba's uh, memorial show. So ah, he was still it. very involved in wrestling, even though he was pretty much on exile with the WWF. Yeah, what do you expect? All right, so Brain, your turn, Brain. What do you have? I'm going to go with somebody who is a protege of Hulk Hogan. Hmm. Hillbilly Jim. Mm. I, 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 he, he, had, he was a, he was he was a face. Yeah. He was a baby face in yeah. he did have consistency. Although there was a part in WCW where they turned him heel. They kept the gimmick but turned him heel was weird. Yeah. Um but I mean in yeah. his heyday in WWE he was like one of the biggest baby faces around. I mean, I would have to disagree. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't as over as Hogan and some as of the much, others. Uh, Piper was over when he was a baby face. Uh, Ultimate Piper Warrior. was more over as a heel, though. Well, I think he was just over. So that when he switched face, he was just as over, but now that they're cheering him instead of booing him. Yeah. Mm. So I think he still had that respect of the fans. Um, oh, definitely. I mean, just the, the down-home country boy gimmick, it worked so well for Hillbilly Jim. Oh, and, also back then, you know, that whole America's the good guy. Yeah, exactly. If you're not from America, you're a bad guy. Like, that That doesn't... Uh, <laughs> Bless you. Excuse Bless me. you. Bless Ow. you. Uh, thank Damn, you, thank I felt you. that one. Yeah, I know. I'm a very violent sneezer. Sneezer, but um, but yeah, like that whole gimmick. See that even Will had to even Dollar Bill had to wipe it off. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, but I saw yeah. some fly past me. <laughs> um, yeah, I got precision aim. Um, <laughs> but um, getting back to it, like he was like that. That gimmick could work in the eighties. Doesn't yeah, really exactly. work as much today. No, it definitely wouldn't. But I mean, we're talking about at his time. It See, worked I, very well. I wouldn't like. I would never. When I'm talking about like biggest baby, baby faces, I'm thinking like those main eventers. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I can understand the, that, but I'm going with guys that you wouldn't think would be on the list of best baby faces. Okay, so yeah, there's a difference. If we're going best, okay, yeah. I could cut you some slack there. If we're going biggest, then no. Don't go messing with the country boy, country boy, country boy. <laughs> that oh. that's that's how far so, back I remember that his intro. Oh song. yeah, uh, that was his theme on the wrestling album too. Yeah. Oh no, I just think of oh, that's actually some random '80s music players. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But that's a good case. All right, Cleaner, yeah. you're up. Round that's two. Case. That's a good case, Cleaner. All right. I could just knock out the big ones. What? I said knock out the big ones. What? For the <laughs> for the beer, the, the Steve Wises. What? Some whiskey. <laughs> what? Jack Daniels. What? Wine. What? <laughs> I got to go with the man himself. What? what? <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin. What? Yeah. That uh, I would definitely agree with. He was he was one of the when he was a, on a face turn. He was one of the biggest face faces on, in the business. Because I remember when he said he was talking about the character, he thought of it as a heel. He thought, yeah. yeah, he's gonna get over good as a heel, and then that's when you notice, like especially because the ECW invasion. Now fans are like starting to cheer the bad guys, and like reject widely rejecting the baby faces. Oh, I remember that. 
So and do I. you just see so much steam pick up for Austin and Austin. And it was like at a point where it was like, we can't do this. Like he has to be a baby face. Yeah. And then when he switched, he instantly became the biggest baby face in the company. Mm-hmm. No matter what. He was just a baby face, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, people say that Hogan helped bring the WWF to prominence. I say that Steve Austin saved the WWF from the extinction. Even though Austin will say, oh, it was a whole cast of collection of characters from the Attitude Era. Um, no. Austin, was, without a doubt, was one, one of the of main faces of the Attitude Era. Yeah. If it wasn't for Austin, there is no rock. Because they didn't have, they had that wonderful dynamic to go oh, yeah. off against each other. Undertaker is not going to carry a company. Hunter is not going to carry a company, especially like, like. No, he wasn't. I remember they tried. Yeah, he, he, they tried. He wasn't carrying the company. Sean wanted to go to w, WCW. Well, I mean, once Brett left, it was like, okay, I'm staying here. Yeah. But the point is, like, Austin sold so much merch. Like if you, I remember watching, I think it was Beyond the Mat and they had like, they were, it was a day they were at the uh, WWF headquarters and they just show like all of the, like, it was just like a a merchandise like Mm -hmm. meeting or some stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just shows you all the stone, specifically stone cold stuff that they had available at that time. You can really buy stone cold anything. That's how much merch he was moving. Even to this day, nobody gets a better reaction than Stone Cold Steve Austin. Absolutely. That I'll shows see you. Okay. And, oh, yeah. Let me just finish this. Um, yeah, he Like the what chant is still over. That shows you how over that man was mm-hmm. in professional wrestling. So I say nobody's a bigger baby face than Stone Cold Steve Austin. As much as WWE might want to push John Cena, I think is – Big of a reach that John Cena has, Austin is bigger. Two years ago, just to let you know, two years ago there was an article printed by Russell Talk who got a hands on the, on the some research from US bookies, and Austin was at the time still number one at mm-hmm. as a top seller. Yeah, mm-hmm. still. Yeah, that shows so, you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That shows you how like over he was with the fans and hit the lasting impact that he has. And normies, I had to also mention because yes. even normies recognize Stone Cold. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I just anytime they talk about wrestling, they always talk about either rock or Stone Cold. Yeah. And like he never turned out to be that big like movie star. And I don't even think it was like his fault. It was just like he I don't think he wanted to pursue it. Because he only yeah. didn't he only did movies for like a handful of years, but then there were, there were some good ones like Longest Yard. He had a good role in that was like a comedy thing. But like then, oh, that remember, was great. Yeah. He was a part of the Expendables. Yeah, the biggest action stars. Like it was literally Avengers before the Avengers, and it was just mm-hmm. the biggest action stars in movie industry, like the that whole was, industry. It was it was it was funny watching him with those guys. Yeah, and Austin was a part of it. Mm-hmm. So that shows you how big of a name he is. I still yep. have never seen The Expendables. I have to watch that someday. I watched part of it. I was like, I was like I'm I'm really drawn out of the action drama. Oh, I like love I still have my favorite like movies or franchises, but outside of those franchises, like Fast and Furious, I can't watch it. Cannot watch it. <laughs> No. Yeah. I literally stick to the I stick to the first three. You know, one, two, and Tokyo Drift. Those are the only three I watch. Mm. Um, it's not the same after Paul Walker died. Same for even before even, that. Yeah, even went, before it then. It was way, not like, getting good. It didn't jump over the shark, it drove over the shark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause like I liked it for the car culture, you know, the yeah. street racing yeah. and all that. But then it, it just is, became generic action movie, and I was just like, "Oh, this is not fun." It became James Bond in cars. Yes, James BMW. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right, so Dollar Bill, what's your who's your next baby face? Let's go with another popular one that 
there's two more I have on my list, but let's go with one popular one whose children have done very well for themselves. One is one has got, definitely went down and up and down, and then it's now it's on a meteoric, meteoric rise. I'm, I'm talking about the original Dusty Roads. Mm, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That hard time. Son of a promo. Mm hmm. Yeah, especially. His promos. Oh, my God. People need to study those. Seriously. There's a reason why he was teaching promo class at the Performance Center before he yeah. passed. He yep. would, he would he watch. He was a master at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just thinking about him, like, especially in those days, you know, those early 80s. You could make a very good argument that he was the most over babyface. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Um, because you know, I, I like, think he was more over than Hogan. Well, I would say, and, that, this and that's is like pushing right it right before the Hogan push. Yeah, you had yeah. Dusty, who was big in like the southeast. I'm gonna say that I don't think so much more than Hogan because, as because you still remember when I when we talk about you know even the normies knowing it's like. They're still kind of they understand a little bit of Dusty, but they don't know Dusty like yeah. they would a Hogan. So I'm kind of I understand where you come from for wrestling fans. I would probably I definitely, especially considering some of his crazier matches, um, even matches with Flair, even some yeah. other feuds. I mean, you know, he's had his some match, classic his matches with Flair, with Funk, with yep. Harley. Mm-hmm. And mind yeah, you, he was still, he almost went down the uh, the uh, Terry Funk route because he, at the end of ECW, he was appearing for ECW because he mm -hmm. was no longer with WCW. He was appearing for ECW doing those, like, some of the matches he had with Steve Carino, man. Those were some good matches. Ah, uh, Carino. You know, I heard that mm -hmm. name. So, like, Dusty, even towards, like, he was wrestling into the mid-2000s. I think didn't he win the tag titles with Flair? I don't remember. I don't think so. No, that was Piper. Yeah, but he was with. I think he was their manager. I remember that. He was with uh, them. Yeah, that's a whole different thing then. But still, it's you gotta admit that guy had everything. Even and he was wrestling for a long time because he was still in the seventies still. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And he was that. like one of the first coaches for the uh, performance center. Yep. Yeah, one of the best coaches, man. Can't get any better. Yeah, you really couldn't. Nah. Yeah. And he, his sons are left a, a big impact as well. You know, the gold dust character. Many people still today consider this, like, consider that one of the best uh, characters of the. Um, the Attitude Era, although Black Rain is not that well liked. No. You guys know what Black Rain is, right? Wasn't that his other gimmick he did at one point? His TNA gimmick. Okay, that's... I he figured. absolutely... If you ever see him, do not bring that up. He absolutely hates it. <laughs> hey, oh, imagine Goldust painted in black and white. That's, that's, like a, black, oh, that's, a, yeah. Star, that's a Star Trek episode. Yeah. Yeah, he absolutely hated that gimmick. Um, oh, but yeah, it's like to see him on his career renaissance now, and to like getting the respect that he finally deserves, mm -hmm. it's nice to see. Oh, and great. then you know what else can we say about Cody? Um, I I, I remember Cody's like, been killing it. He's been killing it, absolutely killing it, and then, like his time in Ring of Honor. Something I'm always going to cherish because, like, I was at his Ring of Honor debut. I was at his last singles match for Ring of Honor, um, which was his second to last appearance. Um, I got, I even got to shake his hand. Mm -hmm. He was coming back up the tunnel. I shook his hand, and towered over me. I'm 6'2", and he towered me. Oh, towered over me. He seems smaller, you know. You know what? Like, I thought he was smaller. Yeah. And then when he was walking back up the ramp, I actually had to look up at him while Dang. he shook my hand. And it was like a firm handshake, too. Even though he wasn't even looking at me and it was just like putting it out. I was just mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, my. No, it was like like that. Yeah, like, er. 
Yeah, yeah. And I, I was just like, oh, my God, this is awesome. Yeah. Wow. And then, um, yeah, because I remember Final Battle 2018, like I said, his second to last appearance. He did his, like, thing, this pose. Mm-hmm. But then he was, like, also on one knee, and he did it right in front of me. And I was like... I was like Ralph. Mm. You know, the Simpsons movie. You remember that? I'm in danger. No, no, no. <laughs> Bart skates by naked. You, you know, they do that whole bit where he's like skating naked throughout the town. And then at the end yeah. of it, he goes, I like men now. <laughs> I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm not. But this is a leading choice if I did. <laughs> and, nothing but, wrong um, with that it's all good no yeah we're it was all good fun yeah um and i also like another moment i remember is um he's hammering a match i forget who it was i think it was um what's his name no 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 it wasn't flip it was somebody and do you remember barry the no drugs bear yes 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 he got decapitated Right in front of me. And Brandy's like laying down next to him trying to get the head back on. It was funny. It was, co- it was hilarious. Because <laughs> oh he got decapitated. <laughs> Fatality. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah, no, that all of that stuff is because of one man. One thing I want to add about Cody is um, one thing that actually inspired me was when he said when we got tired of WWE, he said he was going to go out and take a, and show them what they were missing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember he him did. going to, I remember he was going to New Japan. And I was just like, oh, shit, isn't it? Because like, I he remember he got announced for Impact. It was like September 2016, I want to say. I was just coming home from work. Mm-hmm. And he got announced from it for Impact. Or he had like literally just made his Impact debut. I was like, oh, man, I really wanted to see my Ring of Honor. Then literally like two days later, it's announced that he's making his ROH debut at Final Battle. I'm like, wait, what? He's doing both? Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I was like, okay, going to Final Battle. Like, I think I already purchased my ticket, but I was like, okay, yeah, no. This is like, yeah, I'm definitely going. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. And his debut was crazy, too. Because he had a match with Jay Lethal. It was a nice match. It was actually a really good match. But he, like, literally, first night, turns heel. Like, um, <laughs> he low blows Lethal. And then, then he just starts playing around. And, like, he's flipping off the crowd. And then, like, he's, like, I remember he, he was, like, throwing water at people. <laughs> throwing beers at people. And, like, he even shoved, like, Steve Carino at the commentary desk. It oh, was so like, insane. So like a GCW night. <laughs> Pretty much, he was starting a riot. I was like, "Oh my god, yeah!" Get your attention, but, start a riot. And that was another thing too. I was like, anytime they came back to the Hammerstein Ballroom, he was always a bad guy for some reason. <laughs> Maybe like, he's the ballroom. If, even after if the rest of the Bullet Club was like Babyface, he was a bad guy. And I'm like, I remember Final Battle. He uh, he took the mic right before the match, and he was like, "Uh." You think I like this place? Oh, I'm gonna take the Ring of Honor title and I'm gonna leave. Blah blah blah. And that's why I'm not working the Madison Square Garden show. I was like, oh, oh, yeah, go away, dude. <laughs> and that's right before the Young Bucks. Uh, they spoiled Double or Nothing for the the Ring of Honor crowd because I remember. Well, not they didn't spoil it, spoil it, but um, as so after the show, as they were coming back off the ramp. I got a handshake from Nick Jackson and mind you, I looked right into his eyes and I was like, Oh my God, this is like, I'm meeting my hero. And, um, as he was going up the ramp, somebody asked him when's all in two. And he never, um, no, where is all in two. He said, keep it kayfabe, Las Vegas. I was like, Oh, I wish it was here. But then I didn't realize like he was like, him and Matt were like teasing a whole new company. I did not realize that at the time. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, he told us where Double or Nothing was going to happen before they <laughs> announced it. Look at that. 
Inside scoop, yo. <laughs> Back then. Um, <laughs> okay, so that was dollar bills. Cleaner or er, cleaner? Brain. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whoa, well, wait, wait, wait. You, you're skipping my second round? You're trying to get your third round in? Oh, slow, <laughs> slow your roll, son. Uh, uh, slow your roll and know your roll. I thought I was Now shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> was that a hint? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, it's not. <laughs> Dummy. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm actually another face from the golden age. And he and from the territories, hmm. and he never had a heel turn. Hmm. Junkyard dog. Ooh, mm. good one. He, I love that guy. He was very, big... very legacy on the business. Yeah, Tony, he yeah. should have been a WWE champion. Yeah, uh, absolutely. He should have held a champion, some kind of championship in WWE. I right. thought he was an intercontinental. No, I don't think he ever won. I'm, I'm curious now. I thought he was at least an IC or a tag champ. Nope. Wow. That's, That's not, not sure. right. Yeah, what the hell? Oh, well, no, he, he only got one award, but not a, ta- a title. He got a Slammy Award. That's so it. He, he, did, he did win the Wrestling Classic. Right. Yes. That's about yeah, that and a slammy. That's about it. Other than the Hall of Fame, I, at least from WWE. WWE. Yeah, WCW. Um, he, he was a six man tag champion in WCW with Ricky Morton and Tommy Rich. He was a USWA World Unified World Champion. Um, USWA is it the Memphis Turd? No, that's the. Uh, oh. USWA. That's when Memphis and WCCW combined. Mm, mm-hmm. That's right. And he also had Mid South, but you know, it's kind of there. Yeah, he's uh, got yeah, three he Mid South Louisiana championships, four Mid South North American heavyweight, and eight Mid South Tag Team championships. There's also a Stampede North American heavyweight title. Mm-hmm. Times two. Too. Again, nothing in WWE. Yeah, no, that's criminal. That's a, that's a crime. Just, name Hogan? Because not for nothing. He spent a, a good... He spent a few years of his career in WWE. Yeah. Spent I remember. A little over four years in WWE and didn't, did it, didn't get a title. Uh, barely really? got a title shot at anything. Nope. I, don't think he, I don't think he ever got a title shot at anything. He, he pretty much said Mid Carter. Yeah, he was a solid wow. mid-carder, but still, you have the Intercontinental I... Championship, which is a mid-card title. Yeah, yeah. And he never had a shot at it. Nope. Or he did, and he lost it. Because I think I think he might have had a shot at it against Savage. Mm. That's insane to think about. But I also thought he was in the WWF for much longer, to be honest. Well, four Requiring. years. It feels a long time, though. Yeah. August tenth, eighty four to October sixteenth, eighty eight. Yeah, now, WWF in eighty four is completely different from WWF in eighty eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. So and then anyways. he spent slightly more time in WCW than he did in WWF. Didn't, it wouldn't seem like it though. But did he, he did have spend... to like change his name in WCW? Uh, I don't even think so because I don't think he would change his name there. Because, like, did he own Joint Guard Dog or was that um like a WWF thing? No, that was that was him. Okay, that's good. He he went by the names Leroy Rochester. Mm-hmm. Leroy. He went by his real name, Sylvester, Sylvester. Ritter. He went by that's Big Daddy Ritter. Mm-hmm. And then Stagger Lee. Stagger Lee. Yep. Stagger Lee. Yeah, I like I like Lee. But he also Rochester. owned the name Junkyard Dog from Is 79 it... to 98. Yeah, because that's when he passed. Yeah. 
you know, he only passed away due to a car accident at like 45, yeah. I think it said. Yep, yeah, he's, he probably would have wrestled for like another five years. Easily. Easily yeah. another five. Part when part part of it when it helped kick off the Agile era. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, I mean he was still alive around then doing still bookings, but he probably would have shown two thousand. Damn. Yeah. So yeah. my next I'm gonna Later take the three. I'm gonna take the easy way out. There's no easy way um, out. Oh no, trust me, trust me, it is. I'm gonna go um if we're doing four rounds, I'll probably take another fourth round, like easy pick, but um but yeah, no, we have to go with the Jabroni beating. Wow, 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 wow. Pie eating, trailblazing, eyebrow raising, and something about Toronto sucking. The Rock. Who's actually I know a lot of people were filming this on Saturday. A lot of people yes. were surprised by his return last night on SmackDown. Did, did you hear that crowd? No, because wow. I heard a different crowd in, in New York City. <laughs> the, you got a point there, but if you watch is, the replay. Oof. Yeah, no, I did watch the replay. I was like, oh, wow, he actually showed up. I couldn't um, hear his music. Because I think SmackDown is in the same place in, that – um college game day that today denver which is yeah colorado yeah um they're in boulder because right now um he's actually on my screen right now um i'm watching the colorado state versus colorado game and, they're right and yeah he's in attendance for that um he's hanging, yeah, out, no. he's hanging out with prime time yep, <laughs> yep. um so yeah uh one of the biggest baby faces like he this is like the rare situation where you have like two the two hottest stars in all pro wrestling on the same roster in the same time. It was never like Hogan and Savage was one and two. Cena, Orton, one two. Rock and Austin were one A, one B. Yeah. It was never one and two. It was always one A, one B because. Oh, okay. If they had the point brand split at that time, Austin would probably have Monday Night Raw. Rock would have SmackDown. They yeah. were dynamic, yeah. and that's why I always prefer out of their three WrestleMania matches. My favorite match, honestly, my favorite match is nineteen. Um, that might be a little biased because I was a Rock fan growing up, and he that's the match he won. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would probably say like 17 is the best build. It's the most hype going around it because it was the only time they really faced off where they were both baby face mm-hmm. and they were both so damn popular. It's insane. And it was ruined by a bad ending. Oh, that um, ending was horrible. Yeah, Austin should not have turned heel. Um, that whole heel turn and that run, like he wanted to turn heel, but he real like he wanted to turn heel, but then he was like, I realized I shouldn't have done it because it would not have been good for business. Because especially they did not Rock was leaving to go film, I think Mummy. The mm-hmm. Mummy Returns, I think that's what he was filming. Or Scorpion so, King. Scorpion, Scorpion King, King, one of those. Mean. Yeah, it was Scorpion King. Um, so yeah, the, so he had to leave to go film the movie, and um, they didn't have like a baby face to counteract that. Yeah, and I think it was always. Uh, can, can I be honest? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure if we ever talked about the alliance, that whole storyline. Do you know how me. stupid it is that Austin joined up with Team WCW? Yeah, it made no Be- sense. Because yeah. how much does he talk, like, at least, you know, back then, he would talk about his pent-up rage from being fired from WCW. Mm-hmm. And then they put him on Team WCW. If he would have said, like, if they would have put him on Team ECW, like, if he was wearing ECW shirts, I would have been like, okay, I'll take that. Mm-hmm. Because he actually enjoys his time in ECW. Yeah, yeah, but not WCW. 
and he yeah. should have. That's where you we should have corrected the original like heel turn. You correct it there, and you because do you remember have that night? The, have him be the mole to destroy WCW from within. Yeah. No, I don't even think that. I think he should have just never turned heel. Because do you remember that pop he got from when he um the uh, the old Austin returns? Mm, yes. When it was like that whole night where he's like, "Oh, I need Austin back! I need Austin back!" and he shows up in the uh the pickup truck, starts beating everybody's ass, and then um uh like he comes out and like steal uh G- Jim Ross is like. Oh, he's walking. He's talking. Bob talking. Oh. Even though King wasn't there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, he should have been. That's where you correct that error. And they didn't. And yeah. like Rock. See, Rock was like so good at playing both roles. He could be mm-hmm. a baby face, but he could also be a good heel. Yeah. Look at the nation of domination. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, not, like, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about like Hollywood Rock. Mm-hmm. Hollywood but Rock was so but Nation Domination though that's where he started yeah that's where he started yep. but um, I, I th- yeah that's where he started to like become the Rock mm-hmm. but um, no yeah um, uh, I think Hollywood Rock is like my favorite heel run of his because those promos were so damn funny I love yeah. all his promos regardless doesn't matter. Like, doesn't matter. Any age, like anytime I need to share, I can just watch. I guess turn on old SmackDown when it rocks on, or Raw when it rocks on, and just he doesn't even have to be in a match. Just have him do his interview. And it's just you just yeah. can't help but laugh at like what the hell he's saying. Oh, speak. What about the one I just shared in the chat earlier? Which one is that one? Where I said that's love for the Rock, even with his trash talking skills. Hold on. Where, where he degrades uh, Lillian? Oh, I remember that. But dude, that was that was a different time where everybody got degraded like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Remember, he was done by his strudel. <laughs> yeah, the people. He was always strudel. talking about his strudel. The people strudel. <laughs> yep. Do you, do you like pie? <laughs> <laughs> Cherry pie. <laughs> What? Apple pie? What? What? Blueberry pie? What? What? (laughs) These promos were always just so legendary. Yeah. Boysenberry pie? (laughs) What? Look at at Jonathan coaching me like, get you some out of here. Get out of here. Let's get out of here. (laughs) (laughs) I always love when he's like, always just chasing him away. All right, dollar bill. Round three. Uh, All right. One of my all-time favorite uh, favorite faces. I don't even remember if you ever actually went heel. I don't think so. Um, but definitely one of my all-time face baby faces. And still wrestling today. The legendary to me, legendary and, and somewhat immortal, Sting. Yes. Mm, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think he ever. I don't really think he ever had a heel turn either. No. I don't think he did it in WCW, thing. but it was a real shitty one that lasted like only a couple months. So that's because it shows he does a better face than the heel. Um, it was ninety nine, and it was involving Hogan, and it was like Lex Luger, I think, trying to manipulate Sting. I think that's what the angle was. Uh, because I remember watching a match, and it was like. It was one of the pay per views for ninety nine. I think it was like Sting Spram, Stampede ninety nine, mm-hmm. and it was like Hogan and um, uh, Sting, and like Sting was being booed, and he was like to heal, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like this is Sting in WCW. How is he getting booed? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, but you know, dude, I always have love for Sting, and like he had. TNA heel runs, if you want to count those, because um, he was very, he was the first real big name that TNA brought in. Because he actually first debuted for the company company around like 03, right before, either right before or right after Jeff Jeff Hardy. So Jeff Hardy is still a big name, 
But then again, like this is like the paper, the still the NWA TNA. Oh, okay. Um, he had a couple appearances, but like he wasn't actually signed to the company till like 2006. But um, yeah, you know what? I'm really happy for mm. is that once again for the third straight year, uh, this Wednesday I will get to see Sting wrestle live. Yes. Yes. Very nice. He's, He's got a yeah. tag team match, yeah, uh, with Darby Allen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dumb Let me talk yeah. to you. <laughs> that was one of my favorite segments of TNA, mm-hmm. where he he's just doing that um that talk segment. I forgot what it was called, but um, but like he has a button where he goes, "Dumb yeah, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Dummy, yeah, yeah. No, uh, he would say he would go dummy, and then press a button where it go yeah, and then he would do yeah. So it was dummy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he like did that for like four times or five times. It was funny. It was. It was, it was hilarious. Hilariously crazy, do that, do that. But yeah, and then I was, and then I remember thing way, way, way back when. He was tagging Surfer's up with thing. when he was also tagging with Dingo Warrior. Oh, that was I yeah. forgot what company that was. Uh, UWF. Uh, UWF. Because then uh, they merged. I not merged, but they were taken over by Jim Car- Crockett's. Mm, okay, I and remember, I remember mm. watching a video. He's one of the few guys in the UWF to get over in, in Jim Crockett. Yeah. And Maybe. to get pushed. Yeah. Me, Coach Dean. That's Robocop's uh, favorite yeah, that's buddy. That's when he was, yeah, he was a, he was a heel in UWF. Yeah. Ah. He was part of the, uh, the Blade Runners. That's it. That's yeah. That's that exactly. was it. I was trying to remember that. Okay. Uh, see things you have to remember once you jog your memory. Yeah. Okay. So, brain, your third round pick. My third round pick. Hmm. Where can we go with this? Where do we go, my lovely? Uh, you mentioned one earlier before we started. Ooh. But I don't know if I can go with him. I don't. <laughs> yeah, no. So, but um, despite him having a well-known and infamous he- heel run, mm-hmm. I still have to say one of the over time when he got back into things. Mm-hmm. I think Brutus Beefcake had a pretty good face run in the mid to late 80s. By pretty good, 90s. do you mean um, pretty good at putting people to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> because I'll be and honest with hair. you, man. I'll be honest with you. I never met one person that was like, I really enjoyed that Brutus Beefcake match. No. Never Sorry. met one person. But I mean, the I'm only giving thing the guy he... a little bit of a rub because he came back from a pretty, pretty horrific accident. Right. And I mean, he was still on his heel run when it happened. Granted, and they, yes. They brought him but... back and they turned him face and his character took off for a while. Did I mean, he get yeah. any titles? No, but you know what? He, what? he turned it around where he use the character to his advantage. Was that the barber one or was that another yep. one? Okay. That was the barber. Um, Because the thing is, like, right? There's two things I know British PK for. Mm-hmm. Having the talk show that, you know, especially with the the, um, the rockers and all that. Yeah. So that was a very popular... Shop. Yeah, the mm-hmm. barber shop. That was very uh, important. But then there's also... Being Hogan's side bitch. Oh God, that's what I've heard. True. He only got jobs in like, especially WCW, because he was Hogan's buddy. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but anytime I mean, he comes on, I'm just like, nope, click. <laughs> <laughs> you and the, you and the rest of the crowd apparently. Yeah. I think I saw that. I so I'm so bad. I mean, I gave the guy a little bit of a little bit of a rub for being a, a face after what he went through after his accident. Because nobody thought he was ever going to come back. Well, he did. The guy slammed face first into the ocean at 50 miles an hour during a parasail accident. Shattered pretty much every bone in his face. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Just imagine it hurts. Yeah. He now sets off metal detectors everywhere he goes. I don't know why, but that's not a story. I thought they were just his face, boring... is, his face is 90% titanium. Yeah. I thought they were just heart monitors because he puts people to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy dot com. Um, all right. So like I said, no I'm gonna take com. I'm gonna take the low the low hanging fruit. <laughs> and so if this is our final round, the fourth and final round. Fourth and final round. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. um, I'm going to go with the guy who is now internally known as the greatest of all time. The Doctor of Thuganomics. I can't think of any more th- nicknames um, that he was known by because then it would have been funny. I Giao. can't see him though. No, you can't. Oh, really? He's right him. over here. Get right over here. Oh, he's over there. Oh, oh I thought, I thought he was maybe he's here. up there. Yeah. No, he's He's, a, he's somewhere. He's not even here. Wait a second. Oh, he's over oh, there. Wait a minute. Hold on. He's down here. No, he's not there either. <laughs> I, I would, I would make pop. a joke, but I'm trying to keep the um, at least the PG-13 rating. I have his pop, <laughs> at least. That's interesting. Let's go with The Rock. So, you know, of course. I would like but. to drink some Steve Weiser. Even though I don't drink, I'm not a drinking man. I would love to drink some Steve Weiser's. Mm. Yeah. I I really don't understand why. Like I understand you got the whole broken skull gimmick, but like, why don't you? You thought you would think the easy name for his beer would have been Steve Weiser's, right? But maybe Budweiser you cut a deal. F you, no, nope. cut a deal with uh, Budweiser. And I and Heiser Bush would have to be the one, and they don't, and they were just like F you. So well, I I yeah. would say like have them distribute it. And just like do like a sponsorship deal. Yeah, I mean logically he would, like, but he gets like a cut, and like because it's Anheuser Busch, he'd probably get a whole lot more money than he would with Broken Skull, even though he pretty much owns Broken Skull, the full thing. Yeah, that's also why because Broken okay, so, Skull. Okay, whoa, 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 so let's slow down. So let's stop. Yeah. Stop a second. How do we revert back to Steve Austin? We talk about John Cena. That's how over he is. <laughs> that's how over he is. Well, you know what? It's time to put him under. Uh, no, you never. No, he that doesn't work for him. Brother. We need to put him under because we're talking about the greatest of all time, supposedly. That, that doesn't work As for him, is, brother. You can't put him under. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we're gonna go back to um, Mr. Boldspot himself, John Cena. Yeah. Do 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 do. So the thing John about Cena is interesting. Sucks. John Cena sucks. The thing about Cena is interesting because honestly, when everyone was doing the whole Cena sucks, I actually asked why, and no one can give me a good answer. Because everything they were saying, I was just like, I couldn't agree with. I'm sorry. It was like it just felt more like a personal. It felt more yeah. like personal attacks than something that made sense. Like, for example, yeah. when you talk about uh, beefcake not you know sucking. I could see that because I could yeah, see he, the because he truly did suck. But when, um, when we're talking about Cena, it's like I can't say he sucks. Like I can't because it's, yeah, no, it's I can't. Him. So like I was so growing up, I was a big John Cena fan, and then mm-hmm. um, as I got older, I started to become one of those like absolutely despise John Cena at every move. Like now, I just appreciate him. Yeah, I don't. I never despised him. I just was like yeah, everybody else did. But what I will my say, thing, oh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, what is it? My main thing with him is it's his matches are became very predictable. 
I actually, what I was going to say was, you know, the, the reason why that is, I forget if it was Punk or somebody else had brought it up. They were talking about how the reason why his matches were so predictable and they were very alike is because a lot of the time, John Cena was the one calling the matches himself. Mm-hmm. And that was still of a time where in the wrestling business, you're the heel is supposed to call the match. The bad guy. Oh, I didn't know that. Honestly. But none of the bad guys that they were putting up against Cena were as experienced as Cena. So, right. or at least they did not have good experience in calling matches. Oh. So they let John do the work. And that's why a lot of his matches ended up being the same a lot of the time because he was the one calling the matches. I honestly never knew that. Seriously, I never knew his heels did the, I mean, the calling. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, I forget. Like I think it was like early on, you mm-hmm. learn that yeah, the heels are supposed to call the match because it's supposed to be the he- it's the heels job to get the baby face over. Right. It's so, like that's how it is. Like, like so. Yeah, there are good guys and bad guys in wrestling, but their jobs is like if you're a baby face, your job is to put butts in those seats. Move merch, sell tickets, and all that. If you're yeah, a heel, your you're bad guy is yeah. to put the guy, the good guy, over. Yes, is to make for the putting the people guy. in the seats. Yeah, he's supposed to. Well, not really for that, but it's just to help get him over. Right. Your job is to make the baby face look good, so that the fans buy into the baby face, so everybody makes more money. Mm-hmm. And it definitely worked with Cena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in a low period for the company in terms of creatively storytelling, Mm -hmm. he was still usually like he was so over that the WWE champion would be like the first match of the show and he would be in the main event in a non-championship match. Yes. That's how over he was. As, As stupid as it sounds. It worked for the WWE. It had to work because there was nobody as big as Cena. Yeah, because if you threw him in the middle of the card, there would be nobody left at the end for the main event. Yeah, yeah half, half of them would have gone home already. It would have been like Backlash 2018 all over again. Oh God! Mm-hmm. Me and me and uh, Brian will tell you firsthand. People were leaving it's, at that Roman new. Reigns. Yeah. Did the chance wow. of beat the traffic? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. He yeah, ain't lying. Yeah, because people were literally leaving early. Yeah, and I went. I went. Blame. Fans were chanting, "Beat the traffic." <laughs> A lot of the fans left after the AJ Shinsuke match. Oh shit! Yeah, because that was so fucking disappointing, man. Oh my god! Two of the How greatest many... wrestlers of, of the generation. Yeah. How many times and it do I have ends to say on a double count out because they kicked each other in the nuts? How many times do I have to say I was so anticipating that match because such a, the such good memories of their Wrestle Kingdom match. Mm-hmm. I was hoping to see some of that in person. I got none of it. No, of course nope. not. Of course not. It, WWE when now it's like some of the stuff you would see in Wrestle Kingdom. Oh Japan, yeah. AW, like, well, also yeah. back then, and it's like, not even Mudhouse. Like even then, five years ago. Mm-hmm. Those B pay per views, they truly made you feel like this is not an important show. You don't have to watch. Yeah. yeah. And my like, father. yeah, and it was like literally WrestleMania rematch. Oh, that was stupid too. When they have a when like you have like WrestleMania or SummerSlam or some big, and then the next night of Raw you have a rematch from the main oh, event. Oh yeah, that's stupid. Which, that was the dumbest thing. I like I don't care when it says like rematch cause no no. That's still stupid. Like you would you would as a promoter be like, no, we're gonna we're gonna host it later. We're not gonna do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, as the promoter, you should be knowing like, okay, so yeah, AEW is like changing the game a little bit because um, you know, now they have specials on Dynam or TNT. But th- not only that, but they also have like, you know, less pay per views. Mm-hmm. So they can kind of get away for it with a little bit. Yeah. But mm-hmm. Like in the case of like Monday Night Raw and those bigger company or those uh, older companies that have 
oh, we we have like a pay-per-view or big show every month. Your objective is to put as many butts in seats for that show. So mm-hmm. Raw and SmackDown should be just shows that promote that big show. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's how it's supposed and to be. And we talked about this last season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. About That's the, how much how how the promoters should be listening to the fans. Yeah. Again, once again, we're not wrong. Yeah. We, we have case studies for this. Like you don't have to like you could just always be ahead of the fans by listening, mm-hmm. but you're not you're not trying to insult the fans. You're not trying to get one over on the fans. Right. Well, you don't get mad then because you know you don't call they're them stupid not, because you know they don't. They're not. Them. Yeah, going the way that you want them to. You right. should be like, oh, they're not accepting it this way. Bye. Mm-hmm. All right. So then let's yeah let's let's take a let's try it the way they want it and see how it works. Yeah. Let's turn left or right. Yeah, so right. this is the outcome they want. Okay, let's get here, but let's take on a little path. Let's take the scenic route. Call an exactly. audible. Yeah. Yep. All right. So dollar bill. Your last uh, last pick. Ooh. All right. I can't even think of any other. I can't really think of anybody. Hey, cleaner. Else. Cleaner. Yeah. Call Bay on fire department. I smell something burning. Oh, that's his head. <laughs> Brain, oh, that's just we... Bill Think that's just Bill thinking. Brain, let's not talk about the fire in your pants right now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be honest with like I'm also It's the Taco Bell the Taco Bell special. All right. You know, you know what? I haven't I'll... had Taco Bell in over in over two years. You're not missing much. They no, I know I'm not. <laughs> they the only Taco just... Bell around here closed after oh. they had a small fire in the kitchen and the entire staff quit. I oh, told wow. you, John, stop causing those fires. Tell your brain stop causing those fires, damn it. <laughs> they literally just built but... one like two blocks away from my house. Oh, crap. All right. I have a, I have a sudden... I... I'm going to call it an audible here in a way is because... It's sort of a debate on this, so bear with me. Mm-hmm. Kurt Angle. Which way would you put in more as over? A face or a heel? Depends on which Kurt Angle is. I think it's a pretty even split. That's why. It depends on which Kurt Angle we're talking about. If we're talking about WWE, I'm going heel. Mm. But if we're talking about TNA... You could definitely say babyface. That's why it was like it was one of the guys thinking about. I'm like, he kind of goes, he's. I'll be honest, he feels more like the true tweener than anything. Like he's a cleaner. That's how good he was. He's a yeah, cleaner. yeah. He's a cleaner. That's how good I am. <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, no, that's how good he was. He was he, he knew how to play to the fan. Yep. Yeah. He knew how to get them on their his side. He knew how to get them against him. And that's why, especially, he's so beloved. Just look at his beginnings in WWE when mm-hmm. he came in as the Olympic gold medalist, oh, and they started booing him from the get go. Yeah, because he what was that. Doing? He was that like white hot baby face. Like he wasn't that, or like that white meat baby face. He wasn't like, you know, the Attitude Era babyface where they broke rules and this, that. No, he wasn't doing that. And I think Vince knew that. (laughs) The thing, it was like one of those things where Vince knows it's not going to get over. So this is just long-term planning for a heel. Yeah. For the heel. He's acting as like a babyface. He's acting like an old-school babyface, but he's a heel. Mm -hmm. Heel. Okay. That's why I... I was like thinking, I was debating in my head, but I was like, he kind of fits both because in a way, also when he was TNA, he got a good run as a face, and then yeah, he had a few times his face and yeah, heel. His and TNA his... run as a face was far none one of the Those best. Those first the like three years, three four years in TNA, are some of the greatest wrestling performances of all time. Yeah, mm-hmm. can I? I just want to say this. Yeah, go for it. 
I wish the wrestling machine Kurt Angle, you know, from like 06 to like 09. Yeah. I wish that was in Ring of Honor. Especially Ring of Honor's Golden Her. Oh man. Oh, that would the be, matches oh. he would have had. Yeah. Oh my and then God. he would have been able to go to Japan a little bit more. Um, I can only imagine Kurt Angle in his prime versus Mitsuharu's Mazawa. Ooh. Probably, I would say, as of right now, the greatest Japanese wrestler of all time. And to be honest, Angle works safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. intense, but he's safe. Yeah, so he would have worked a really good safe match with he's more. He's more hard to himself than he is to other people in the ring. Yeah, I, I seem to notice that with a lot of guys. Yeah. Like, Angle is, like, a prime example of, like, he's more hard to himself. Because, like, the one thing that always, like, gets to my mind is, I don't know if he did it in WWE, but he did it in TNA at least, like, two or three times. He jumped off the top of the cage. And it's, Uh, like, the stickiest moonsault of all time. It's, like, literally him flipping, like, pretend this is Angle. It's literally like this. Like, he doesn't have, like, a bend. Like, so, it's not like this. Oh, he's only yeah. flat like, then. Yeah, it, it's just like that. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's all because of the neck, too. Yeah. Yeah, he can't, he got, he can't do, like... He kept breaking uh, his freaking neck. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. He's got, like, the worst of it. Like, it's literally, he's got to turn his entire body. Yeah. He wrestled with a bro- with a freaking broken neck. Yep, broken freaking neck. Broken freaking. He neck. won a gold medal with a broken freaking neck. Yep. And I can only imagine the intelligence. I can only imagine him with in Ring of Honor with a broken freaking neck. Oh God! Against like Joe and Punk and yeah, oh, like Ring of Honor Joe. That's what I meant. Yeah. 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 Punk Danielson, Prime Danielson versus Prime Punk. Or Ooh. Prime Angle would have been, oh, oh my god, yeah. Prime Punk versus Prime Christopher Daniels. Ooh. When is Prime KD K- or CD? Prime Angle versus? No, when is Prime Dan- Daniels was like uh, early. 2000s. I would say oh six. Like, I would say like, before that. I would say oh six. I would say oh five specifically because that was when yes. he had that triple threat match with Angle or with Styles and Joe. And uh, I yes. think it was Final Destination 2005 for the X Division title. And the reason, especially why I bring it up, is because Will Ospreay has said that's the reason why he became a wrestling fan. That match specifically. I'll have to look it up next time. It's a very good match. Yeah. Okay, uh, Brain, close this out. End it. Gentlemen, one of the greatest faces of all time besides held again we you have a face for radio (laughs) and a voice for silent movies no this is the greatest face of all time okay this duck (laughs) the duck the duck (laughs) quack quack he has had some of the greatest matches across the globe He has had a trilogy of matches against somebody who will be mentioned on another episode. He, according to our group, he and his opponent hold the title of the greatest WrestleMania match of all time. That person is none other than Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I can't think of a heel run for him. No. He, he That's how good he never had a heel run. Nope. Nope. He was always the face. He was always the baby face. And still in, in professional his... wrestling as we speak. Yeah. Yep. Four decades of excellence. Yeah. Oh, not five. Yeah. Man, 70 years old. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still love the swerve that they did on on Starks. That was so fun. That, that was. was so perfect. 
that was the contract says the dragon but it didn't specify ricky the dragon steamboat it just said the dragon <laughs> this guy's also known as the dragon yep <laughs> american <laughs> dragon <laughs> but his that whole storyline with savage where savage crushed his larynx on the railing and then use the bell to crush it a little more. Yeah. And then to come back and win the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania 3. Mm-hmm. That's match yeah. number 9 on the card and that stole the show. So I, it was yeah. in Dark Side of the Ring. I don't know if it's been in like other places. Um, Ricky showed I don't know if it was Ricky or if it was Lanny, but one of them showed they were talking about the WrestleMania three match. Yeah. And they literally showed off like a whole notebook. Mm-hmm. Every single move laid out mm-hmm. by like it was like number forty eight. You know, uh Larry. Yeah. Number forty nine, punch. Forty fifty, punch. And they would yep. just say, okay, 50, 51. And like Macho Man would legit get mad if you forgot one little segment. Yeah. One um, little part in that. Segment A2. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What you? <laughs> like he took his craft so professionally. So seriously. Serious. Yeah. Yeah. So professionally serious. And it like I wish, I wish there was another wrestling company around that didn't kill his love for wrestling because I think he could have especially helped so many like the young wrestlers at the time Mm -hmm. with like character building and the Mm -hmm. art of professional wrestling, the science of professional wrestling. Somebody I missed very, very dearly. Wow. But I, mean, I do want to... Wait, go ahead. I mean, you think about all the matches that Ricky Steamboat's had over his career. Right. You think about... If you go back to his time in NWA, mm-hmm. that trilogy that he had with Ric Flair. I believe he was also in... um. Oh, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. I'm, I'm thinking of Savage. My bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. Ricky. Yeah. The trilogy uh, of matches that Ricky Steamboat had with Ric Flair are still some of the. I think they still consider like the greatest trilogy of all time. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Definitely. And those those two men, they could go for an hour or more, and not even, not even blink. Yeah. I mean. Out of the three, I think the shortest match was 45 minutes. Damn. Yeah. Now, you get guys who are gassed after six minutes. Like, are you kidding me? Yep, six minutes. That's also because it's like, it's, it was like something I was hearing the other day when it was, um, it was Lance Storm talking about what Jim Ross had told him after one of his matches with Jericho. Said something about to slow it down a bit so they could so then the commentators could you know hype up the guy. And but I'm also thinking if you slow down a little bit, it also gives the guys one chance to catch their breath, two, the audience to catch their breath, mm-hmm. and three, that way you can actually pace a little better because you're not trying to move, 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 spot, spot, yeah. spot, 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 spot. Yeah. That's why you'll get the guys who put a guy in a headlock on the on the mat. But then like, they can't be like Orton who does it for 10 minutes out of a 12-minute match. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think like that's where a lot of that, uh, that intensity and that spot, 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 spot comes from is because you watch WWE and a lot of it, especially during its like, like 2008 to like 2012, it was a very, very, very slow. Mm-hmm. And it was like slow, boring matches. They were all very similar. Oh yeah. And there needed to be an alternative to that. Yeah. 
And I think that's yeah. why I like AEW so much because it's a nice, happy medium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get some matches that go like crazy fast, and some matches that just goes smooth. Yeah. You know. And you know what? Just... Like, there are some people like Steamboat himself. I wish he was just teaching people how to wrestle. He such a wonderful mind. And such a gentleman. Yes, yes, that's another yeah. thing too. He's one of the best people in professional wrestling. I know that firsthand. Because I met him. Oh, I just wanted to say before we go, there's one honorable mention I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Although she is a heel now, I just want to talk about the the baby face run of uh, in NXT of Bailey. Mm-hmm. She, even though she was like not even the women's champion, like before she was a women's champion, she was one of the most over acts in NXT. Mm-hmm. She was playing with so many people, and I'm never gonna forget NXT Takeover One being in Brooklyn that night. Like I know there was, I never. That was the one thing I I, I probably told you guys plenty of times before. I when the um, SummerSlam was in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. those four times, and even when WrestleMania was here. I always went to the takeovers. I never went to the, the main roster show. And the main event of that, even though it wasn't technically the main event, it had the big fight feel. It was the, the prime match of the show. Mm-hmm. Bailey and Sasha. When I remember when she hit the Bailey to belly. Mm. No, well, she hit a top rope Frankensteiner. And I legitimately got out of my seat. That was sick. Upper deck. Yeah. And then immediately hits the belly to belly. One, two, three. Yay. I was so happy. Mm-hmm. Um, because like that whole story she told, that underdog baby face, yep. so well done. And I know a lot of people didn't like it towards the end. But that whole gimmick, that whole Bailey. The hugger gimmick, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I don't see her going back to that, though. I hope she does. I do hope she does. Because that's how much I enjoyed it. I know, but right now she's having a good run as a heel. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that. But yes, you are. I hope, I hope if she ever does, <laughs> I hope she ever does become a, if she ever does become a baby face again, I hope it, I hope the hugger returns. Mm-hmm. Oh, admit it, you just want a hug from her. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I knew it. Oh, boy. Well, an interesting set of rounds here with the, uh, going into some of the va- famous, most best and famous fa- baby faces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wonderful tough. discussion here today, boy. Yeah. Yes, indeed. All right. Gentlemen, next week, The Law of the Ring. Me, I know. Stop talking about me. Yeah, you wish. <laughs> if anybody around here is the Law of the Ring, it's me. Mm. And yeah, they just say you know rules are meant to be broken. So um, <laughs> bah, bah, bah. <laughs> ah, nice, nice. If stuff. you think you can break them, try me. I got. I got away. <laughs> you can't catch me now, copper. <laughs> oh, I'll catch you. Mm. May not be nice. today, may not be tomorrow, but someday I will catch you. Hi, Liam Neeson. <laughs> 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 All right. But, yeah. All right, gentlemen, as always, till next week. The next week for the Fox Gods. Too sweet. <laughs> Just for <one> once. <laughs> And, and 